Well, hello and welcome to Outdoor Oklahoma from beautiful Mount Scott. I'm Todd Craighead, and this might be one of my top three favorite places in our great state. There's just something for everyone down here, from the refuge to the lakes. Well, if there wasn't already enough to draw you here, well, there's a brand new reason right over my shoulder. It's the newly opened Medicine Park Aquarium and Natural Science Center. Well, I'm now down here at the Medicine Park Aquarium and Natural Science Center with the Executive Director, Doug Kemper. And Doug, this has been a long time coming, but you're finally open for business. We are, Todd. We're, we're, <laughs> we're happy to be open. And it has taken about six and a half years from the concept design and fundraising design and then construction, which actually is not all that long. It, I've, I've had to... Uh, uh, the opportunity to be the founding director of several major aquariums, the Seattle Aquarium in Seattle, the Aquarium at Moody Gardens in Galveston, and the uh, my favorite one, <laughs> besides this one, the Oklahoma Aquarium in Jinx, and uh, all of those institutions, even when we had all the funds in place, take five or six years to design and build. The Oklahoma Aquarium took 18 years from concept <laughs> to to opening, so six and a half or seven is not all that uh, all that uh, great a length of time for this kind of facility. You know, this is exciting, especially for Southwest Oklahoma, to have such a, a destination uh, venue for folks to come to. Tell us a little bit about what visitors might see when they come to the aquarium. Well, the, the aquarium, we're partners with Oklahoma Department of Wildlife Conservation, Absolutely. as you know, through the Sports Fish Restoration Act, Fish and Wildlife Service, and you guys. And just as with the Oklahoma Aquarium, we partnered uh, with some grant money to sponsor our native fish exhibits at the Oklahoma Aquarium. The same here at the Medicine Park Aquarium, although the difference being the Medicine Park Aquarium is 95% emphasis on native wildlife of Oklahoma with a special em emphasis on those species in Southwest Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. It's designed as a native wildlife zoo, aquarium, botanical garden, and science center. And phase one emphasizes the aquarium and the botanical garden with a few other exhibits coming online very shortly later this summer and this fall like a river otter habitat exhibit and a greenhouse for year-round butterfly exhibit featuring native butterflies of Oklahoma. We have a four acre, uh, the, the, the aquarium building I should say is about a 10,000 square foot building with over 75 aquatic exhibits, mm. about mm, 35,000 gallons of water so it's not a <laughs> small facility by no. any means. And uh, again, 95% of those are native fishes and amphibians of Oklahoma. Then there's a five acre uh, botanical garden attached. It's sponsored by, by, a, uh, by the Terry K. Bell Trust here in Lawton, Oklahoma. It's the uh, Southwest Oklahoma Wildflower and Butterfly Conservation Gardens. Five acre garden emphasizing the wildflowers and other native plants that grow here in the Wichita Mountains and the prairies of Southwest Oklahoma. So it's, it's, it's all those things, and it will grow into, as I say, a zoological park uh, as we progress. We have about a 50-year marketing and capital expansion plan. If, <laughs> if you have 25 major exhibits and they come online every one and a half to two years, that's I may not be here, but the last one goes into play. I might not either. Yeah, you right. know, you've got a, a beautiful backdrop with Mount Scott right there, and this is one of my, my favorite destinations in Oklahoma with the refuge and Lake Watonka and everything else in this area. But some might say this is a little off the beaten path. Why would you, why would you put such an impressive facility here where there's not just a lot of drive through traffic? So what was well, your purpose here? Well, uh, uh, multiple purposes, mm -hmm. I suppose. I grew up in Lawton, graduated from Lawton High School, which is nearby, it's the largest uh, metro area in Southwest Oklahoma. But you know, in Southwest Oklahoma, I'm gonna call a 20 county area of, south, uh, of our state, Southwest Oklahoma, sort of those, those areas east of I-35 and south of I-40. And there's really about 600,000 folks living in that area. So the idea was to create an economic development uh, to enhance, help enhance Medicine Park uh, area, the Southwest Oklahoma area, to provide a quality of life development 
for, for family attract, compelling family attraction, and to provide science education for those kids in Southwest Oklahoma. So, the purpose is that is quality of life, science education for kids, and economic development with tourism. And actually, we have quite a number of drive-bys, given the Wichita Mountains Wildlife Refuge, a little over a million people, uh, 1.2 to 1.5 million folks that visit the refuge every year, and they pass right by this location and through Medicine Park. Since the mid-90s, uh, some folks have really invested time and effort in, in, uh, in uh, uh, redeveloping Medicine Park. Uh, there's uh, uh, David and Candace McCoy, I'll mention them specifically, they've been very active in in uh, creating business and, and housing development and that couple donated this property for this project to specifically provide for what mm. we just talked about. Economic development, quality of life, kids and families. Well that's great. You know I've, I've had a chance to, to go through the aquarium and it, I'm very impressed I must say. It's, it's very well put together, well, it's organized well and I know that this is going to be a very popular thing in the very near future. You know, Medicine Park was already on the map, but I guarantee this is going to make it right. even well, a brighter star on the map. Well, your department is to be, uh, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> applauded for, <laughs> uh, you know, your great work in helping develop the Oklahoma Aquarium, for example, and now helping develop this aquarium. So we have yes. a lot going in Medicine Park and lots of partnerships with the, with the department, and we look uh, forward to continuing that good partnership. Now, you do have a website, I'm sure. It's www Medicine Park uh, Museum of Natural Sciences, really. But just okay. look up Medicine Park Aquarium. Yes. And it'll come right up. We're open every day of the year. We'll probably, uh, this will be our first, uh, uh, this Christmas and New Year's will be our first. <laughs> right. <laughs> we'll have to decide. With, we may <laughs> close on Christmas and Thanksgiving sure. Day. But other than that, we're open every day of the year from uh, 10 to 5. And you and love if, groups, I'm going to assume. Oh, oh, we do. We, we, we have a large group planned and coming today. And, That's uh, great. We've got already booked, I think, since we opened, uh, well over a thousand kids through their summer schools and their All right. kindergartens, and so. Well, I know you're going to get awfully to... busy once school starts, too, probably. Well, we, cer we certainly will, I think. <laughs> well, thank you so much for your time, and we're awfully excited that you're finally open. Well, us too, Todd. Thank <laughs> you guys for coming down and, and enjoy your visit. And I never get tired of the views up here. You know, what trip to southwest Oklahoma would be complete without a visit to the Wichita Mountains National Wildlife Refuge Visitor Center? Wow, that's amazing. Just on this page alone, there's Kansas, Oklahoma, Puerto Rico, Germany, Pennsylvania, Ohio, Louisiana, Washington, and Florida. Just on that page alone. It's just amazing the number of people that come through this visitor center here at the Wichita Mountains National Wildlife Refuge. And you know, I've been here many times, but it's a good reminder for me every time I come of how many things that are iconic Oklahoma, and I just simply take them for granted. And this Refuge Visitor Center is one of those things. <laughs> I probably wouldn't make a very good bird. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha. 
<laughs> you know, I don't know which is my favorite of all the sounds in the wild. That and the gobble of a wild turkey. Mm. I could listen to that all day long. <laughs> The refuge was uh, set aside in 1901 as part of the uh, forest preserve. In 1936 it became a part of the refuge. Uh, we reintroduced bison. We uh, re recovered the bison or the bison were brought back from the Bronx City Zoo. Uh, there was a substantial herd of 15 when we started. Now we manage a herd of about 650 bison. It was set aside before the plow ever had the chance to hit it. So this is kind of the meeting place for the mixed grass prairie. We get some of the tall grass prairie here, we get some of the short grass prairie here. Same thing, so we got the grasses meeting and then we've got post oak and black deck trees and some of the last remnants of, the, of this pristine forest. Uh, also with, with all that meeting, kind of here you get some of the species that meet here. So you've got an eastern meadowlark and a western meadowlark and we get both species here. And that's common through different species, different grasses and different different things on the refuge. It's kind of a midway point between the east and the west. We're one of the, among the highest visited refuges in the United States. We, we, depending on who's doing the numbers, we may be the top visited refuge in the U.S. Uh, we annually do between 1.7, 1.9. If we stay on the rate we're doing right now, we may exceed two million visitors through the refuge. The visitor center itself, we usually capture between 160, 170,000 people walk through the front doors. We've got on record, we've, uh, approximately 115 different countries have been represented here at the refuge. Uh, we, have the, we have a little book, if you're from another state, we'll mark you in there in your hometown and, and, and try to keep a, a general map if people are willing to give us where they're from and where they're, coming, where they're from. Uh, I bet you we've got almost all 50 states, you know, the military base right next door to us. You get a lot of folks from a lot of the country coming over and you know we're, there's, we're, we're right in their backyard so they're coming. One of the things that we don't see a lot of is, is you know there's, there's a lot of Oklahomans that have never been to the Wichita mountains. So a lot of our visitation is out of state and out of country and then people from Oklahoma realize it's in their backyard and they're, they'll, they'll, be, they'll be repeat offenders at that point. takes me back. My dad was an extension forester his whole career here in Oklahoma and I grew up with that very poster as well as several others on my bedroom walls. Hmm. You've got a hidden treasure in your backyard and there's, there's something for everybody out here whether it's, whether it's hiking, wildlife photography, wildlife observation, uh, fishing, uh, do a little bit of kayaking, but there, there, there's something for everybody. 
A few years ago, Oklahoma was hit with an incredibly hard period of drought. Nearly everyone was affected border to border. Crops didn't make, livestock and wildlife suffered, and many lakes hit an all-time low. One lake in particular was hit especially hard. Altus Luger nearly went completely dry. And then in the spring of 2015, the rains came back. And in an unprecedented event, Altus Luger went from nearly dry to overflowing its floodgates practically overnight. Well, our fisheries division went to work immediately to restore the lake back to what it had been before the drought. And already, anglers are being drawn back with stories of huge walleye, abundant catfish and crappie, and plenty of angling opportunity to go around. So as we continue our tour of Southwest Oklahoma, let's jump in a boat and do a little fishing with three of Oklahoma's finest game wardens. The rocks, the mountains, out in the middle of nowhere, and being a clear water lake, it's just beautiful. And the fish seem to really thrive in it because it's a little bit salty. Shad populations are real good. Also, it's pretty close to where I live. I've always been told by a bunch of older older gentlemen that this lake can fill up in 24 to 48 hours, and I always thought it was nonsense until I actually seen it myself. So I believe them. It'll fill up quick. Uh, we got some good rains in the right spots, and it filled the lake up. Well, I'd say all the little quick stops are staying busy, selling ice and soda pops and stuff because everybody's coming to the lake. You got a full lake full of water, not only for recreation, but for fishing also. So they're buying lots of fishing tackle and reels and line and everything else. But uh, it's doing a lot better. The communities are doing good, selling gas too. A little gas station selling gas on the way to the lake. So that helps everybody out. Frederick, but when I moved to Altus in 07, I started fishing it before the fish kill. And we did, we've did we always done really well on walleye out here. It's pretty good hybrids, sand bass. It's always been really well. 
Uh, then we had the fish kill. It's coming back. Fishing's doing coming back a lot better than it. It'll be good in a few years. Real good. Using a road runner, uh, casting it and retrieving it. Slow, trying to make them bite. It's been so hot. Just trying to work it slow in front of their face. Hopefully they'll jump up and bite it. And they like these rocky areas, these rocky points. That's why we're trying to hit them through here. If they wanted to just come down here and fish from the bank or from a boat, just use a red and white roadrunner jig, you're going to catch fish. You fish it slow. And if you're not getting hung up in the rocks every once in a while, you're not in walleye land. <laughs> 